Hey everyone, this is Randy from BibleBuyingGuide.com. Today I'm taking a look at the KJV Topaz Reference Edition from Cambridge. I have it in green goatskin leather and in brown calf splits. So let's take a look at what we've got. Both have the same paper. The only differences are the leather and the ribbons. Both are two pounds, five ounces. And we'll go ahead and measure here. We just a touch over six and a half. And almost ten and one inch and a quarter. So the green goat skin is a little bit of a olive, a dark olive maybe. Has let's see one, two, three, four, five spine ribs. And then this one does not include the logo that we normally see on a came like this we normally see the seal this one does not include it the goat skin has a little bit of a grain to it it does feel pebbly i like the, the look and feel of it it has perimeter stitching gold stamping on the front and on the spine and then the ribbons are they do seem to be beresfords in three shades of green so we do have three of them then the head tail bands are a green and red and then the green has a red art gilt. Then the liner is edge lined with calfskin. And the leather does fold over. And it's, it's very floppy. It's very flexible. But at the same time, you can hold it open easily. It's not so flexible that I feel like I'm going to lose it. it. It's easy enough to hold. brown is calf split and I think this is a stamped green this one does not include the perimeter stitching it's got a little bit of a an edging around it and then one two three four five spine indications with the gold stamping now this one has a paste down liner it looks to be reinforced see that tape right there I think that's reinforced binders tape if you can see that the edge of that tape and then this one has smaller ribbons. They're not as wide. On the goat skin, they're three eighths, and on the calf split, they're a quarter, one quarter inch. And this one has uh, brown and gold head tail bands with gold gilt. I like both bottles. This one's also easy to stay open. Let's see how this one opens in the front. I find. The goat skin stays open better than most goat skin editions. I had no trouble at all holding that open for reading. No issues at all. And of course the calf split stays open well. A little bit better. A little flatter because it doesn't have that hump to deal with. So the calf split is just a touch flatter. So we have several end sheets to help give it structure. And then we have a presentation page. Get this one out of the way. And then family records. The record of, and then it has the, the husband and the wife who was who married, children, marriages, grandchildren, and deaths. This was made in the Netherlands by Royal Youngblood, typeset by 2K Denmark in a 10 point font on, called More Pro. Now that 10, 10.8, I believe that 10.8 is the letting, the space between the line plus the, the font. So it's a 10 point font with a 10.8 letting using more pro book. Printed in the Netherlands by Royal Youngblood and is printed on the French milled paper. This is the 28 GSM Indopaque that is exclusive to uh, Royal Youngblood. So this is a very premium paper, some of the most expensive paper out there. They did not go with a, with a thin paper to be cheap. They went with a thin paper to be small. And I appreciate that myself because I personally prefer a Bible that size. That's my favorite size for a Bible. one and a quarter, one inch to one and a quarter. One and a quarter is great. And it includes the epistle dedicatory and the translators to the reader. Translators to the reader, that's an important document. I'm glad that they included that. It's printed in a small font, double column with uh, bold section headings. I like that. Now, the text itself does not include section headings. So here is our text. 
double column, verse by verse. They do a couple of things in the text that I like, and that makes it stand out to me as one of the best designs for a KJV you can get. Unfortunately, they also do something I don't really like, and I'll point that out as I go. But what we have here is a double column, verse by verse, with the verse numbers in red, chapter numbers in red, and they've separated the references and the footnotes. Now, this is the same references from Zondervan that they've used in the Clarion and in the Pitt Minion. Same references and footnotes. 45,000 references. Those on the, for the left column are at the top, and then those for the right column are just under it with a space between them. This gives you a, a lot of space for notes if you wanted to write some notes in there. About a little over an inch, inch and an eighth. So you have a little bit of room there for notes if you need to write. Now, one of the things that it does that I love is the typical KJV in verse by verse, every verse starts with a capital letter regardless of punctuation for the rest of the sentence. This one places them in, in a lowercase letter if it continues the previous sentence, like right here and right here. That is important to me. I like that. That's better punctuation. It helps retain that consistency of the context. That's better. I prefer that. I'm glad they did that. This is a red letter edition. It has about six to seven words per line, and they're printed with line matching so that the lines are printed in the same place on both sides of the page. This helps reduce the show through. There's not a lot of show through with this paper anyway. Some of the most minimal show through I've seen with the 28 GSM Indopake. That looks really good. Highly readable. I love that the footnotes are in the in the bottom because it's easier to use all of them. Everything's easier to use. The collars, what I call the footnote in, in reference keys, the little collars, they're small so that you can ignore them while you're reading. So when you're reading out loud, preaching from it or just reading, I don't pause awkwardly because I think there's punctuation there. It's actually small enough that I can just read without it being a, a problem. I love the colors. That red is beautiful. We don't have any page summaries across the top, and it doesn't include section headings in the text. Here's a red letter. That's a good red. Both the red and the black are highly consistent all the way through. They use a really slow print process that, that uh, improves the consistency. I like that. One of the things I don't like, I'll show you here if I can find one. Shouldn't be too difficult to find. At the end of books that are epistles of Paul, Cambridge adds a little note that where it was written from. At, in all the other Cambridge KGVs that I have, those are under the bottom of the, of the book. In this one, they're added to the last verse as if they're part of the verse itself. I don't like that. I didn't talk to them about this. I don't know their motivation behind this or their train of thought behind this. So I'm not going to uh, accuse them of anything, but I don't like that that was added to the verses. It should be added underneath as a reference. It's not part of the text, and it's not in italics. It does include italics for supplied words other than that one. So here it is in 1 Corinthians. In all other KJVs that I have from them, it's under. I'll show you that as we do some comparisons. Another one there. So no page summaries, no section headings, but across the top we do have the book name above the, the column of text in the outer margin, the book name and the chapter number, and then the page number in the inner column. Red letters only for the words of Christ while on earth. So in Revelation, we're back to black letter. I was kind of surprised by that because in the uh, Pitt Minion they, and in the other translations, they continued with red letter through Revelation. They've kind of stepped back into some of their older designs. And another thing they've stepped back into their older designs was the concordance. I'm kind of surprised by that as well. The concordance in the clarion and in the pit minion instead of being a concordance it's a reader's companion which includes updated words so it works as a glossary this one does not include a glossary of any kind instead it uses the same concordance as the topaz 
the, the new Topaz, which is a, a retype set concordance that uh, uses a digital font. It's a good concordance, but it's in a paragraph, which I find a little bit awkward to use because I you know I find this verse, I find this reference. Does that verse go with this reference or does that verse go with that reference? I, 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 it's kind of hard to follow because of being in paragraph. I do prefer concordances in uh, verse by verse. As an example of the number of references, here are the entries for God. It starts here, goes all the way here. So that's a lot of references. Then in the back we have the Cambridge maps. 15 maps with a map index that's color-coded. This is the same one they use in the other Topaz editions and in the, um, the newer Turquoise in the Clarion series. And then here are the maps on matte paper. Very colorful. Lots of information here. So let's do some comparisons. First is the Bible that this is considered an upgrade to, which is the turquoise. This Bible was designed over a hundred years ago, and the footprint is about the same, really close to the same. The turquoise is a touch thicker, and the topaz is a touch wider, but they're just about the same. Here's how both goat skin look. The texture is exactly the same. The blue turquoise that I have is shinier. Other than that, they're the same. And then it, it has two ribbons instead of three. They have the same paper, the same materials. The difference being the layout. Both are red letter editions. So let's show the red with the uh, turquoise noticeably bolder. This is an older setting with a, a, a hot metal press top set. I do find the topaz a little easier to read for a longer period of time. Here's how they compare. And I'll show you in the back of some of these books. The turquoise has fewer references and it has page summaries at the top. So here's the addition that they've added at the end of the books. Just a little note about who wrote the book from where. And then with the topaz that's added to the text itself. Same concordance, except in three columns. And then same index and same maps. Next, we'll look at the Concord. This is one of the Bibles I consider to be a gold standard. Same with the turquoise. They're both good Bibles. This one is a mid-sized Bible, and it's obvious. It's a little bit easier to carry, but it has that same thickness that I like. Same paper. This one was designed in the 1950s. And then here's how they compare. A little bit darker font, but also a little bit smaller font. And there's its red letter. It's available in red and black, both. So here's how they compare. Same tools, basically. Um, a, a little bit of little less references in this one more references in the topaz one thing i like about the concord rather than colors in the text it, it has the bold reference system that keeps the text cleaner it does include uh, self-pronouncing marks but in the back we have a bible dictionary we have a concordance and we have a glossary plus the same maps Another Cambridge I want to compare is the Clarion. And the reason I want to compare that one is the Clarion is the one they consider the, the carry Bible and reading Bible. And the Topaz is the one they consider the preaching and ministry Bible. The Topaz is not available in the calf skin, but the Clarion is available in the calf split and in the goat skin. So I'm just going to show this one because I want to show the colors. So there's how they look. There's how they compare. And... This one, of course, being a single column layout, but it also has a poetic setting and it has a paragraph setting. This one's by far better for reading, in my opinion. This one includes the same references and footnotes and then also the information about the book names. The note about who wrote it from where is added at the bottom. 
like I prefer. Now this was a black letter text. So here's how they compare. One of the things the Clarion does better, in my opinion, aside from the layout being made for reading, this one has a reader's companion, which does give you the updated words. It gives you a dictionary and it gives you a concordance, both. This one includes the same maps. Another comparison to the calf split, we'll look at the Westminster Reference Bible which is calf skin. Now this is the older edition. This came out in 2012. This one was made in the Netherlands by Royal Youngblood. Everything I've shown so far has been made was made in the Netherlands by Royal Youngblood. But it is currently made in Belarus. So I don't know if the quality is exactly the same. I haven't seen it myself. But here's how they compare. Quite a bit thicker and quite a bit smaller footprint. And then 200,000 cross references in the margins with updated words in the text. Here's how they compare. Now the Westminster has the same concordance. A little bit larger font. And then it has some maps in the back with some note paper. And it, it, there's its maps. One of the best Bibles you can get in my opinion. Next, I want to compare with the long primer. Now, I do not have the long primer that includes the same paper as these, so I'm not going to compare paper. But I will show thickness difference, and that's just 36 GSM versus the 28 GSM. But the footprint is similar. And leather is quite a bit different. Let's get one of these out of the way. Long Primer is a black letter text. It was made not quite a hundred years ago, but it's an old text. It's an Oxford. And then here's how they compare. This one is a 10 point. It also is a center column reference. And it has a lot of references and they're a little bit hard to find sometimes because of the way the, way the design is. They're sort of everywhere. It's a good Bible though. Here's how they compare. This is a black letter edition. And then in the back, this one has one of the best topical indexes I've seen. A good concordance. Subject index is amazing. And then a dictionary of proper names. Note paper, which I love. And then it's got uh, maps. Good Bible. Next is the Thomas Nelson KJV. This one is made in China. But it's a very good Bible for its money. So here's how the brown compares as far as color, and here's how the leather compares as far as texture. The green is just about the same. Goat skin edition, a little bit thicker. Footprint is the same. So here's how they compare. Now this one is 36 GSM paper, black letter, but red highlights all the way through. And now this one is a center column reference with updated words on the page where I prefer them. Also has book introductions. So here's how they compare. This is a great Bible for the money. The quality is not quite to the same level as the Royal Youngblood built Bibles, but for the money, it's excellent. It's only a notch under, but the price reflects that. Next is the KJV Lion. This one's from Humble Lamb. This one is also made in China. Thicker Bible, same footprint. There's how their goat skin compares. Now this one, has the best gilt I've seen on any Bible. Instead of an art gilt, it has four edge art, which I prefer. I'm an art guy. This also has uh, artwork from Gustave Doré inside, which can be a little bit distracting on the page. There, I'm a, I'm a fan of Gustave Doré. 
here's how they compare. Now this one is a blue letter text, so I'll turn it over to the blue compared to the red letter text. This is our blue versus red. Lion also includes updated words in the footer, but they're a little bit hard to find because the numbers are small. And then the references are stacked, which I like a lot. So there's how they look. Concordance, and then maps in the back. So that's my quick look at the Cambridge Topaz in KJV. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. I do wish it had a glossary. If I could change one thing, I might change that. I might add a glossary. If I could change another, I would change the text at the end of books so that it didn't so that it didn't have this as part of the text itself. Other than that, this is a great Bible. I like this a lot. Excellent for preaching. The paper is a little thin, which can be difficult if you're not used to thin paper. I'm used to thin paper, so I'm not having any issues with it. But um, it feels silky smooth, highly readable. The, the darkness of the font and the design of the font is great for reading for a long period of time. I enjoy reading from this. The red is not an overly bold red, so it's not something that hits you in the face. But at the same time, it does stand out. But it could be a little darker for some. I, I'm okay with this darkness. I like this a lot. So I'll play some links in the footnotes where you can make a purchase if you're interested. Also, uh, I'll place links to the written review at BibleBuyingGuide.com where I always go into more detail in my writing than I do in my videos. And if you have any questions, let me know. Cambridge did supply these in exchange for an honest review. Thanks for watching.